All right, we should be live. Great. Uh, hi, everyone. Great. <laughs> okay. So Dan and I are going to play a game tonight, or we're going to try. We have no idea what we're doing. Yes. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Uh, so my suggestion so I, was... Sorry, go on. Sorry, go on. No, you go ahead. Okay. So my suggestion was go that ahead. we play um, the what, one of the solo, one of the D&D solo modules. This is the first one, alphabetically. I have no idea what order they came out. This is uh, B Solo, the Ghost of Lion Castle. Uh, these were designed to be played totally solo by one person. Um, but I thought it would be more amusing for us to play it together, collectively controlling one character and uh, laughing at their uh, terrible state of, of uh, deaths and whatnot that we go through. No, no, I think we're going to crush it, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, here, I'm in it to win it. Okay, great. Great. Not here to lose this. What are you? <laughs> have you met me? What are you... <laughs> so this uh, this came out in 1984. This is by Merle M. Rasmussen. Um, so I will say I will point out that I played in a game with Merle M. Rasmussen uh, four excellent. weeks ago at TotalCon. I played in a game with him, and as a result, I and of course he is the original designer of TSR's top secret espionage James Bondy game, mm -hmm. and as a result. I am prepared for the sniper that he's put <laughs> in the high point of the castle because he always Excellent. always Excellent. has a sniper on the high point of territory. So okay. I already have a leg up. Excellent. Great. Yeah. Great. Uh, so this is, as, as part of the B-series, is definitely written for basic D&D. &D. Uh, given the date, I'm going to say that this is Beck Me. Uh, that's the expectation. Yep, yep. Um, what we've got here is sort of your classic D and D module type thing, where you've got your your you know trifold cover with with various maps and tables and whatnot, and then your your book. Uh, the book has about two pages of rules, and then and then it gets into the content. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and uh, zip through the rules real quick. I think the major things, Dan, that you and I are gonna have to figure out is uh, mapping and mm -hmm. maintaining a character sheet. Great. And so for that, we've set up set ourselves up with Roll20. So I've got a couple things here I can put on the right side of the screen. Right now we're just looking at the PDF in case we ever need to look at that. Uh, but I also have the Roll20 game here, which you can see I, I tinkered a little bit where I imported one of the maps. Uh, are you actually connected to the game? Because I would assume I, I would see your picture. As soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, I should totally log into Roll20. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, do that. Yeah. So I've toyed a little bit with Roll20. I've I've discovered how to do a few things. Um, there are two tools right off the bat that I'm really happy with, and then some other stuff that's making me sad. Uh, the biggest thing that made me sad was uh, I just had a miserable time trying to get their video chat to do anything useful. Okay. Uh, so I'm pretty glad that we're using Skype here alongside it. And I think that's I think a lot of people use Roll20 like that, right? You sort of Roll20 in one side of the window and you know, Skype or Discord or something for your video chat on the so, other side. Don't okay, so the little here's the interesting thing. The little bottom right corner there, Dan, is your color. Mm -hmm. So you can modify your color if you want, and that will change the color of your dice. And uh, that's one of the things I'm really pleased with on the left bar. And I don't know what your view is like. I think because I'm technically the DM of the game here, maybe my view is a little different from yours. Uh, minimally. Yeah, okay, uh, so you have this bar on the left with these various tools. Yeah. Cool. So, so here's, here's my favorite part, right? You've got the little die roller. Let's say I want to roll 3d6. Boom. There we go. Gotcha. Got an 8. Why don't you try to roll and see Twice. what that looks like? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Great. So, so the colors are where, you said? The colors in the, are who? In the, in the bottom... In where our icons are at the bottom of the screen, there's me and there's you, and oh. in the bottom right oh. corner, there's oh, a little. Oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. Color. Um, for readability of the dice, I definitely recommend a pretty light color, because you will get black letters. Black I'm totally numbers. going black. Yeah, that's nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you jerk. <laughs> I think we can still see in the chat log what you actually rolled. Um, oh, I, that was a terrible roll, actually. I'm glad I didn't see it. <laughs> um, 
Uh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, that's good. What are you picking? What's your color? Uh, I I I kind of I kind of tried to go with the um. There you go. With that kind of sure. yellowish. Gotcha. So it does it gray out the screen when you roll the dice? Does it what what the screen? You like sort of do a little like the screen gets dark and you have to draw a line. Is that what you're seeing? No. No. You're you're just going like. See, as yeah. soon as I click the button, I get this click and drag to roll the dice, and then I can put a little English on them. In whatever direction I want, you can them put to go. English on them. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, look, look, I can go left to right. Right. No. I don't. No. I don't see that. That's fascinating. Why? Why? What? Oh, maybe it's a setting. Uh, enable three d dice. Enable chat. Oh! Automa oh! Oh! I wish that was in the game. There's a there's a button. There's a checkbox that says automatically roll three d dice. Let me try that and see if that does. Uh, yeah, okay. So you must have automatically roll 3D dice, which actually I think is kind of better. So in your yeah. settings there where it says yeah. use, yeah. there's enable 3D dice and there's automatically roll 3D I dice. Did. I did do that. If you get rid of the automatically roll, then you got to like drag a line in the direction and how hard you're throwing them. Yeah, it's, it's That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit much. Man, people and their <laughs> dice superstitions are really <laughs> funny. They're really funny. Okay. So I can um, draw shapes. Do this. Yes. Yeah. Do this. You can draw shapes. There's also. Um, do you have this little blue page toolbar, or is that just me? Because I'm DM. Let me see what you're talking about. The who, the what? There's a little blue icon near the top, right by the the zoom control, that says page toolbar. I'm not sure if you have control over that or not. I don't think I see that. Yeah. Okay. So that allows me to make multiple pages. So. I, so I guess so. Like if we do shit on this page with a map, gotcha. What I'm not sure what to do about is the character sheet, and that's this is one thing I discovered when digging through their site is like the ability to make custom character sheets. That is at their top tier of payment. Like, okay, nope, <laughs> you don't you don't get to make custom character sheets unless you pay them money. Gotcha. Um, How do I erase these shapes that I've drawn here? I think if you use the select move and then like select them can you hmm. i'm just drawing more shapes that's oh, that's this. Not oh maybe this you... this and then you do what if you can can you select them and then like maybe hit the delete button yep yep yeah. well it's funny it's the exact the exact same thing in my class software <clears throat> that i couldn't figure out so so here's the thing that i like here much i'm going to uh, I'm going to create a new page. Let's shift to that page. Okay. So when I was drawing, dragging in the map, so let's uh, let's let's pull in one of the other maps. Uh, here's here's level one. Boink. Oh, that's tiny. Okay. Uh, let's let's, uh, let's scale them up. Okay, great. That's still really tiny. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Okay, cool. So it's got its own grid. Right, and the default nature is to snap to grid, and of course my map has a grid, and so like reconciling those you would think would be a pain in the ass. But this is this is the other feature that I'm really pleased with. There's a thing in here where I can select um, a line to grid, and it asks me to draw a three by three box over the grid of my map. Oh, weird. Boom, and then it sizes it to fit the grid. Now I'm not seeing that on my copy of Roll Twenty, so I don't know if you have like yeah. a, a paging mechanism. Was that intentional? I think it's because I am set up as the DM, okay. so I probably okay. have a bunch of controls that you do not have. Gotcha, gotcha. So I do not see that yeah. at all in Roll Twenty. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm that's gonna... that, like if you set up a game and marked yourself as DM, you would get these tools. Okay, that's okay. my guess. But you see what I'm saying is I actually don't see that map that you're just, so I see oh, the map interesting. show, but I don't see it in roll twenty. Um, hmm. I'm currently looking at the the castle top view map. Yeah, that's interesting. How do I send you there? Where right, I can definitely see. It says, do I just oh, I just drag the players? How about that? Got it. Now do you see it? I do. Ah, crazy. Yep. Drag and drop my. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, and then what do I like? Double click or something to move over to it? Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, so that that at least gives us maps. Mm -hmm. What I'm still not sure of is what the hell we do about um, 
character sheet. Okay. You got any thoughts? Um, how complicated is the character sheet? I don't even know. I, so when I set this up, I told it not to use, because it was like, what game system character sheet do you want? And I'm like, well, none of these. Okay, okay. <laughs> so okay. I said none. Um, is paper an option? Or does paper and I hold up the camera an option? Yep. Or, uh, yeah, yep. I think so. I think so. I could. I mean, I could set up a separate page that's like the character sheet page, and you could use Roll20 to draw on that, but maybe that's painful. Maybe. Scribbly. Oop, now I can't select that. Oh. Great. Um, I would, of course, then have to be in control of jumping back and forth. Do, do you have any tools on your end to like set up a character sheet or something? Uh, um, you, you talking? Uh, you talking software? You talking in roll? Something 20? in roll twenty. Yeah, I'm curious if. <clears throat> What kind of stuff the player views got in Roll20? Um, okay, so I see, I don't know. So I see So I see the drawing. So I have one, two, three, four. So I have six. The, the left-hand menu has six items for me. Mm -hmm. Do you have more than that? You're one, you got more than that. I think I that. do. Um, so I have the select move arrow. I got the draw shape. I got the magnify. I got the... Snappy, snap to center. Yeah, yeah. A dice, and I got the help. Um, okay, yeah. So there's stuff where I got fog controls if I want to like hide bits of the map, okay. and there's this. Yeah. I got this clock button that. I, oh, it's turn order. Yeah, whatever. Um, on what about on the right I, side? So on on my window uh, here, yeah. I'm just gonna drag it over a little bit. Mm, 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 mm. That's not great. Now it's blocking my view of you. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I just resize the window a little. Yeah, right. So I get this this whole sidebar thing. Yeah. Do you have this? Two, three, four, five. Oh, sure, I do. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one of them I think is called journal, and one of them, and that seems to have characters. And I can like, I'm going to add a character. I do have that. I, I when I click yeah. that, it, it, my sidebar is just blank when I click it. When you click it's, add character, or you don't, don't have that. I don't have the. I don't have characters or handouts. Hmm. 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 Just. Okay. What happens if I do this? Oh God. Um, players can be filled or can, can be edited and controlled by. Yes. Oh. Uh, what's our character's name? We have to make that up up front. So the module specifically wants us to play a magic user or elf. Um, I'm guess I was assuming Dan that we would not actually play Beck me that we would like just use O D and D but but try oh, to f follow the constraints of. I love it. Of the of what the book wants, so the book wants us. It has a bunch of pregens in it. Yep, they're all elves and magic users from levels one to three. Weird. How about it a? Sorry, go on. Third level elf. Sure. Do we want to make one ourselves, or do we want to use one out of the book? That's my question. Oh, interesting. I because it know, even I definitely the rules talk about like, well, you can use one of the ones, or you can make your own character and just use your own character from wherever. You know, I don't. I still don't have anything in journal. When I click on journal, it's still blank. I don't yeah. have any. Controls yeah, well, it's because I, I I'm trying to make this character um, and give you control of it. Oh, I see. You have to make one document yeah. first, and then, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here. Uh, here uh, yeah. Show to everyone. That's fine. Great. Okay. So, do you see this? Whatever it drew. I do. Okay, and you should have control over it, so you should be able to fuck Great. with it. Yes. See stuff. Can Maybe you do stuff like change its horrible name? I can. Good. Um. And I think we can drop him on the map. Totally can. Great. Okay. So I'm going to stick him on the map and I'm going to get rid of this sidebar. Um, that is interesting. That. Here we go. Let's line this up. Uh, attributes and abilities. Is that. Are abilities like what I expect? So they have attributes and abilities, or ah, oh, attributes, name, strength. Sure. Why I mean, not? I just add that, obviously. Yeah, I guess. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so it seems like attributes would be like what D and D calls ability scores, is what it looks like. Right. 
Is there stuff? Is there like equipment? Places to put things like spells? Doesn't I don't see that. Oh, oh wait, I such an edit button. Oh. Uh, GM notes, bio and info, tags. Abilities. Okay. Edit. Um, I think you forgot dexterity. What? I don't see dexterity. Oh, jeez, dummy. <laughs> and you, you can move these things, right? Yeah, it looks like probably grab the little hamburger on the right next to the X. Nailed it. Yeah, yeah. IO and info, attributes and abilities. I don't know, where do you think we should put equipment? Probably under bio, I guess? Sure, In sure. Sounds yeah. informational to me. Sure. I think that's fine. Hmm. This keeps oh, got it in up. a separate window now. Slightly off. That's interesting. Get it. My boy, that very except that it's a teeny tiny little text box for bio info. This <laughs> is clearly not ending up. Can I just say nuts to the grid? Maybe. Ugh. Moving this around is not fantastic. Um, no, I already have no snapping, but uh, apparently it's going to snap the guy to the grid anyway. All right, well, whatever. I don't know if we even care. So um, so the thing is, this, this module comes with a bunch of maps Great. that are uh, you're intended to have up front. Every character, every, every, um, Every pre-gen character has at the end of their equipment list Lion Castle maps. Okay, all right. They are explicitly incomplete. Okay, okay. So great. they're going to give you some. They're going to give us some info, and we're going to presumably want to draw on top of them. Okay. Uh, the other amusing thing is as you go through the booklet. I open right to one of the giant pictures there. So you open the booklet on the borders. There's always this margin which says magic journal and we're encouraged to leave notes to future adventurers who may be us after we die really yeah oh that's yeah. sweet that's okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna buzz through the rules here uh yeah. real quick okay so you will need the D, D basic rules a set of polyhedral dice paper pencil and an eraser don't use a pen because your traits and possessions may change during the adventure okay all right. Welcome to the world of Sargon the Wizard. You are about to set out on a thrilling magic-filled adventure in a dangerous haunted castle, and you'll be on your own. Only your wits and your weapons can help you. If you choose one of the pre-rolled characters provided with the adventure, your character will be a magic user or an elf. If you decide to use your own character for this adventure, the character cannot be higher than third level. Your character cannot use any spell, magic item, or equipment that is not listed on pages 31 to 32. Okay. This is a solo adventure. You read entries just like this one. Each entry asks you to make a decision about what you want to do. Some entries like this one simply direct you to the next one. Read entry R2. Right, so just getting you used to the format there. Yep, yep. Um, okay, blah, blah, blah. Choose entries. If you're exploring outside areas of the castle, they begin with the letter C. If you're exploring inside, they begin with L. Courtyard versus Lion Castle, I guess. There you go. Um, you will keep a record of your adventure as you explore Lion Castle. Each time you find an item on your journey, add it to your character sheet. If you lose an item, cross it off. If you take an item from a room, that room's entry will direct you to cross out the sentence that describes the item. Okay. 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 The Magic Journal. The solo adventure pages in this booklet are bounded on each side by spaces marked Magic Journal. Reminders on record keeping and how to place certain entries are here. You may also use the journal to make notes to yourself about specific entry or direction. You may write anything you wish in the magic journal. Some examples are avoid L21 and enter through the postern gate. Okay. These notes right. will come in especially handy when you decide to play the adventure again as a different character because you will die. Okay, all right. Is the Great. subtext there? I mean, for, you know, weaker players, sure. But. <laughs> Several we, we maps of Lion Castle are shown in the booklet cover. These are not complete. You will have to fill in some of the blank areas as you explore the castle. A light grid is printed over most of the maps to make it easier. Most L entries list room dimensions for you. 
All walls, ceilings, and floors in Lion Castle are made of stone, and all inside walls are ten feet high. Got it. Um, some stuff about fighting monsters and rolling initiative. D6 for initiative. Yep. Um, movement rates are used only in combat. Uh, if you choose to retreat, compare your movement rate per round to the monster's movement rate. If your rate is greater than the monster's rate, you escape. You may go on to the next entry of your choice. Before you leave, however, the attacking monster gets one more chance to hit you, gaining plus two bonus for its hit roll. Mm. For this attack, you must calculate your armor class as if you had no shield. Also, you cannot defend yourself. If you choose to throw food or treasure to a monster, subtract the item you threw. Intelligent monsters are stopped only if you throw treasure. Um, intelligent you may monster. encounter the following intelligent monsters in this adventure. It lists them out. All other monsters all, will only stop if you throw food. Gotcha. Okay. After gotcha. you have thrown food or treasure, roll 1d6. On a 1, 2, or 3, the monster stops and marvels at its gift. Consider the stop creature as defeated. You cannot take its treasure, however. On a roll 4, 5, or 6, the monster ignores your gift and attacks. Yep. Standard original D&D type rule. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, there's some stuff here on morale. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Using magic. If you, this is, the, the spells are where it gets a little, a little wonky, especially uh, disappointingly on the charm person spell. Um... If you decide to cast a spell, you cannot use hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, consider, when you cast a spell, consider the monster to be in a 10-foot square area and within 10 feet of you. Some spells allow for the monster to make a saving throw. Here's how to make a saving throw. Because of strange magic in Lion Castle, some spells do not work the same as they normally would. So we're going to coat this in fiction. Yep, yep. Elf and magic user spells higher than second level do not work at all in the castle. Okay. All right. <laughs> For details on spells whose effects are altered in this adventure, read entry R16. Right. And then it goes spell by... Basically, it lists all the first and second level alpha match user spells and tells you what they do. Okay. The game. Uh, but some of those are changed, you're saying? Some of those are changed, like Charm oh, Person? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll read you one of them. Charm Person. This spell may affect one living bugbear, gnoll, goblin, hobgoblin, ogre, or orc. The monster makes a saving throw versus spells. If the saving throw succeeds, the spell has no effect. If the saving throw fails, the monster does not attack and hands over its treasure, if you ask for it. Why would you not ask for it? Yeah, all right, I get it. The monster yeah. does not answer questions, fight for you, or go with you. Yep, if okay. you attack the monster with a weapon or another spell, the spell's effect is automatically broken. The spell's effect is also broken as soon as you enter another room or area. Okay, that's fine. Yep, so um, it has some rules here on using light uh, offensively, and sleep, and yeah, basically every first and second level. It's funny because normally Charm Person doesn't affect bugbears. Bugbears was in that list, right? Yeah, bugbear, gnoll, goblin, hobgoblin, ogre, or I had this or discussion orc. recently that normally gnoll's the highest level thing that it affects. And I actually, I screwed that up in my game like about a year ago. As I let them charm a bugbear as I got confused myself about it. Interesting. It's good to know. Um, there's a note here about fighting monsters in the dark. Whether you, If you're an elf, you have infravision. If you're a magic user, you don't. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of notes about specific monsters that you might face and how to fight them. Okay. Um, wandering monster checks. Here's a section on healing and resting. If you okay. want to regain lost hit points and do not have any magic means to do so, you may stop at an entry and rest. When you decide to rest, follow these steps. One, subtract a day's worth of rations from your character sheet. If you have no rations, subtract two hit points because of hunger. Great. <laughs> roll 1d6. If you roll a 1, a wandering monster surprises you as you sleep. Refer to entry R14, wandering monsters, for how to run the encounter. Great. If you do not encounter a wandering monster while you're resting, add one hit point to your hit point score on the character sheet. One hit wow. point for sleeping a night. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. However, I think the most important part, because again, remember this is for magic users and elves, you may study your spellbook and regain any spells lost so far during the adventure. Return to your current yes. entry. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Blah, blah, blah. Specific stuff about specific spells. If, and then defeated characters is the last section. Uh, I'm sorry, second to last. If a monster defeats you, go to your character sheet, cross out the character's name, and circle the possession still held by that character when he was defeated. In the magic journal next to the last entry you read, write the following notes. Skeleton of character's name. <laughs> Refer to circled items on character sheet. Oh, wow! Oh, that's brilliant! Oh, yep. that's oh man, Merle, that's that you nailed it. That's great. That's <laughs> great brilliant. Thing. 
When you play the adventure as a new character, you may find a defeated character's possessions. You may take these possessions and use them in the new adventure. Add any items you find in this matter to your character sheet. You cannot read another magic user's spellbook. Interesting. Yep. Okay. What? No. That's not right. Beginning the adventure. Pages 31 and 32 of this booklet list six characters you may use for this adventure. Tear page 31 along the perforation and use it as your character sheet. Choose one of the characters from the sheet. Now you are ready, ready to begin. Okay. So the interesting thing about the pre-rolled characters is that they are actually levels 1 to 3. So, I mean, I guess there's some... I feel like there's really this notion that, like, probably you're not going to make it through with the first character. And so maybe you want to strategize at when do you use up your third level character versus your first level character. (laughs) I get it. I get it. Right? So Uh they they give you a third level, a first, second, and third level of each is what they give you. They have different equipment, which is interesting, too. And I think, basically, based on what kind of character we make, I'll just choose one of them as as our starting equipment. Does that sound good? Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, how I, do you I mean, to... just to be clear, if anybody's watching this and they don't know about classic D&D, first-level magic users have one spell, have one single spell that they can cast. The end, period. They're yeah. done. Oh, it's it's right. not good for first-level magic users. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. They're going to have terrible hit points. Yeah. Uh, terrible armor class. Yeah, that first level. Now, that said, there's definitely a little balance going on here with the inventory, which is why I bring up the equipment. Okay. okay. The first level magic user probably has the best equipment of all of them. Okay. Okay. Wacky. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, then you send him in, you kill him, and then you, you, you go get his skeleton, right? That's the plan. <laughs> there you go. That's the, you know, <laughs> there's this, was always, this was always my strategy when playing the board game Dungeon is you go in with a character type who needs a lot of money to win, yeah. you get 10,000 gold pieces, then you get yourself killed, and then you send in a new character who only needs 10,000 gold pieces to win. Go well, pick up, inter- go pick we up must have, and get up. We must have different versions of Dungeon because it's super, it's super hard to actually get killed killed. It is. It's a very yeah, difficult it's strategy impossible. to execute. Yeah. I didn't say that it was easy I, to do. <laughs> That's a terrible but it's, strategy. It's, I, I don't like, I, it's, it's like practically impossible. It's the dungeon equivalent of shooting the moon in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get if you can pull it off, it feels really good. That's <laughs> I, I've never. I played a lot of dungeon, and I don't think I would have never thought that's a legitimate strategy. That's loopy. It's you got, and the, the funny thing is, I can't remember. You, there's like very specific monsters you're hoping to encounter that the yeah. powerful character sucks against, and the weak character yeah. is actually good against. I don't yeah. even know what that is, but you're right. There's a couple it, in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so uh, what? Let's let's. Um, uh, let's make a character, shall we? I or, recommend that I just use a paper character sheet over here, and then okay. you know, ver- either verbally tell you what's going on or hold up the camera. That's fine by me. <laughs> Are you okay with drawing the map on in roll twenty on top of this? Uh, yeah. okay, okay, on top more of likely the- here. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the page. So most likely it's gonna look like this. Oops. There should be a one-click way of getting in on here. Okay. And then I, if you have different software, you would rather use because that's part part of the whole reason we're doing this, right? Is to like experiment with the software. Uh, if you're like, you know what, roll twenty is just getting in the way. Although I do like the dice roller. Yep. Yep. Um. Can you see what I'm drawing right now? You, oh. You drawing. Um, I think I'm sorry. I'm trying to align the grid of the thing. Yeah. Where are you drawing? Uh, I'm drawing right on top of that grid that you're looking at, actually. Okay. And I'm not seeing it. That sucks. No. Oh wait. Yeah. No, I see it. There it is. I had to scroll. Okay. Over. Okay. I yeah. Yeah. Scroll. Yep. I totally see it. Okay. Uh, in fact, what I need to do on this page, in particular, is widen it. Uh, Really can't. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that should hopefully make it wider. Oh, that's interesting. Dan, on yours, yep. can you see when I... Oh, no. I thought... Hmm. Okay. There was a moment there where it was, like, pinging, which I thought was actually kind of cool. Pinging? Nope. Yeah, I was making just a little, like, 
lip where I clicked, like to draw attention. Okay. Which I thought was nice. I thought that was what was happening. Maybe I'm full of crap. Your end. Well, the I see. It feels like there'd be a little. Anyway, okay. Oh, so you're gonna I be see, okay. By drawing. Default, I see. By default, my my drawing is my color from my dice. Those match yeah. by default. I can yeah. change that by every time I go back, it goes back to my color. I see. See, I really wanted black, man. I wanted to be Mr. Black. I can I can draw on this. This is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna try. I keep trying to like size it just so. Oh yeah, I did see that. I totally did see that actually. Yeah, you just right. You just saw the ping. Well, I don't yeah. know. Is that because I was moving the map? Yeah, it's because I'm moving shit. Oh really? That's goof. Well, I guess because it's it's really it's meant to be more miniatures on a board than than whiteboard. Gotcha. Right, we're trying to use it like a whiteboard. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm going to switch us back to the other page. Okay. Because um, I think that's a more interesting map for us to look at in the start. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Okay, here we go. You ready? So, so basically, the yeah. way we're going to do this is Dan is going to do all the like the note taking, and I'm going to do the reading from the book since I have the physical book here, and then we're going to discuss as we play and decide what to do. So, uh, uh, including character creation, is that a? Is that? Oh yeah, let's do let's let's character right. create. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, but I think I think you got you got you can. I'm okay with you using paper to create the character mm -hmm. on, but you got to roll the dice on roll twenty so everybody can see. Yeah, of course. On. Great. Yep. Of course, go for it. Um, uh, are, we, are we doing OED style? Is that Are happening? you watching the chat? I just realized I don't have the chat window open. Are you watching chat? I am not. I'm going to open chat, see if anybody's actually watching this craziness. You're talking, you ta you're talking Skype chat, right? No, no, no. The stream chat. Let me crack it open. Okay. Yeah, okay. Nobody's okay. chatting. Okay. Okay. Well, in case... In case anybody's actually watching this live as we do this, and like we get into a debate about what should we do A or B, it might be kind of funny to like ask the viewers. <laughs> That's my one thought. Okay. That's great. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um, I don't know that anybody's watching this. <laughs> They'll find it. They'll find. It. This is good. They, they they missed the prep work part. Yeah. Um, great. Great. Uh, where's my name generator? Um, got it. So, for a name, I propose Elmar Ravazana. <laughs> Ravazana. Ravazana. Love it. Love it. Ms. Ramazana, if you're nasty. Ravazana. Okay. Ravazana. Ravazana. Oh, totally. We have an audience. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we we go by our last name, so we go by Ravazana. Of course, everybody everybody knows us by the family name, <laughs> Ravazana. <laughs> so uh, we are an elf of are we fighter three, wizard three? Is that the deal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to go? You want to go with as as high power as we can, huh? Awesome. Have you even met me, Paul? What? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Let's go. I'm I'm looking forward to when this character dies and we decide to send the level one magic user after after her. <laughs> go and find Ravazana's remains. <laughs> That's a whole adventure. It's the remains of Ravazana. Right? So you got the alliteration there. It's all it's all made for you. Great. Um, what alignment would you like Ravazana to be? She sounds like she's what? Neutral. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now again, in my in, in OED, right? The rule technically says if you would like to be chaotic, secretly inform the DM out of out, off away from the table. So, well, do you have Merle Rasmussen's phone number? I do not. <laughs> All right, then then we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have his email. Actually, I could email him as a matter. You email, you know, yeah, yeah. I want yeah. Rasmussen. <laughs> I want Ravazana to be chaotic. Is that okay? <laughs> You'd be like, who the hell is this? So, third level, right? Oh, man, now yeah. I need my... Uh, 
because I have different rules. So I have different rules for first versus higher levels. Right. Okay, so for third level, we roll just Are one. We, uh, okay. We're using the, the OED uh, players' yep. rules here? Okay, yes, great. Sir. Yep. Yes, great. we are. Great. So based on statistical analyses done by myself, the best, um, the best reflection of characters that survived at third level is to select one, select one ability, and roll two d6 plus six for that. So, what do you think our our prefer, our our best ability should be? I would go with dexterity. Would be my choice. Okay, dexterity. I know that's an odd choice for a fighter magic user, but I'm guessing well, that int doesn't actually matter. Why do you say that? Why would intelligence matter? Oh, intelligence. Oh, I, yeah. oh, I see. I thought yeah. you were. I don't right. think okay. so. So my choices are going to be either strength or dex to get the most pluses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. And dex, dex, I like because range attack and AC are both nice. Yep. Always a smart thing. Okay, I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll two d6, and then we'll add. We'll mentally add six to that. Great. Great. Like, all right. Here we go. Bam. Oh, 12. not great. We have a 12, 12 dexterity. 12 for dexterity. So that is... <sighs> trying to roll better of... dice, Dan. Jeez. Yeah, sorry. That's zero bonus. No bonus. Sorry about that, everybody. If we were fourth level, I would get, I would get, better, I would get better things, actually, but that's it. So now I'm going to go down the list in order, and I'm going to roll 3d6 in classic D&D style. Great. Again, that, that extra thing's the one little gimme that I, that I do in ODD. We're going to so end up first... with everything better than 12. Let's hope. <laughs> Here comes strength, which which was yeah. the other thing we were considering that we wanted to be good. Yep. 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 Oh man, that's awful. That's eight. That's a minus one penalty. Oh, Ravazana. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, this is intelligence that is twelve. Twelve. Right. This is one of my down the middle characters. Here comes wisdom. Yeah. Oh. Oh, twelve. <laughs> Comes Constitution. Thirteen. That's a plus one. It looks. Okay. Ravazana the healthy. <laughs> and here is Charisma. Oh man. Mm. At least that. At least that's no penalty. At least. Ravazana the plane. <laughs> so I get a minus one on strength stuff, and I get a plus one on Constitution. And we're down the middle on everything else. Great. Great. So who's that? Uh, there's that so da, 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 abilities. We ought to roll hit points, right? Mm -hmm. So on um, in OED, we're going to roll separately for the fighter stuff and the the wizard stuff, and surely the and, and take whichever one's highest. So surely yep. the, the fighter one's going to come out highest. Okay, I want to roll one of the pools. Great, great, roll them both. What? Oh, I thought I thought we would we would compete. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> okay. So so great. So so you roll you roll for fighter and I'll roll for wizard. So it's okay. Three d eight for you and three d four for me. Okay. Here comes three d eight. Let's count. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, great. Oh no, we can't both roll at the same time. Though. Okay. 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 okay great. great. <laughs> Wait. We can look in the log, right? We can look in the so log. The, and so, see the, what I got. so the fighter. Did mine actually go? Oh, mine did go. Yeah, yours overrode mine. So mine were there for a half a second. Cause I see yours. I don't see mine. Oh really? I only see yeah. yours. Oh wacky. No, I only that I only see yours. Fascinating. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, so, we can look in the log, right? And I can see that I rolled an eleven total, mm -hmm. and you rolled a four total. Okay. And so uh, adding a plus one for per level for our good constitution. So yeah. the fighter roll is technically fourteen, and the wizard roll is technically seven. So we have officially fourteen hit points. Excellent. Excellent. Fighter pool wins. Great. So there's that. There's this. So um, tell me what we have for equipment. Sure. Ready? You're going to yep. be surprised by this. We have a sword plus one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. We have chainmail armor. Okay. We have a shield. Nice. We have a rope of climbing. Really? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Fancy. We have a magic journal. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> A backpack. Mm-hmm. Some wolf's bane. Nice. A large sack. Gotta have that. 21 days of rations. Really? 21 days of rations? 21 days of rations. And the Lion Castle maps. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, now, it also has a spell list here. Should we just go with the spells that... Uh, the... Sure. Or do you want to roll them? I'd be okay either way. I mean, the, the book is supposed to work with any... 
character you want to bring in. So is it just like that? So as a, as a third level, okay, in OD and D, as a third level wizard, you have four total spells. You have three first level and one second level. That's actually oh. more than this yeah. Beckme character has. Yeah, I know. So I know. Be, I'm, uh, I'm down with that. Let's let's you know let's use uh, let's let's. Uh, I got my I got my book of spells here. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're saying we should have three firsts and one second. Yeah. So is there so is their list like just the stuff they have memorized, or is it like a whole spell book from which to select? It's got to be just the stuff they have memorized because. Okay. But there is the whole rules about resting and regaining your spells. So I I kind of feel like it's probably both. They probably have okay. terrible shitty spell books here. So I do like so like you yes. know actually like in my games I actually give the characters their spell book has everything at first level to pick from. And then maybe a couple wow. things from second level to pick from. That is super generous. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I like, I like, I do like having them, you know, have the have the strategic choice before they go off about what they're going to do. Okay. Um, I'm okay, I'm down with that. Okay. So, so say we have all the first level spells and how many seconds? Depends on intelligence, actually. Do you? So I have a I have a tool that automates that over here for OEDs. So do you mind if I if I just use yeah, that spellbook tool? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna find the damn thing. Did I write that in C plus plus or did I write that in Java? See, I usually just roll dice. I can see there are sixteen entries here. Um. So that eight. sounds like a D eight and D six. I don't know, four, five, or six. I'm gonna add. Add eight. Spellbook generator. Run. Okay, so I'm running. I'm running my thing. So we're a third level wizard, and we yep. have what twelve intelligence. Yep. yep. Okay. So what the what the generators come up with is all the first level spells. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, actually, not all the first level spells. Actually, I guess mm -hmm. I did this for some reason. I did this differently here. And um, so I got six first level spells in the book, and one, two, three, four, four second level. <clears throat> cool. So they wow. are. So first level is detect magic, light. Protection from evil, read languages, read magic, and shield. Great. Second level is continual light, detect invisibility, mirror image, and pyrotechnics, Paul. Well, that pyrotechnics is going to be a problem because that's definitely yeah. not covered in the book. Okay. Uh, well, we can replace it with fireball. No. <laughs> that's a higher level spell. Uh, um, oops. I figured. Just wiped it out. <laughs> I'll just redo it. I'll just redo it yeah. and make sure we get stuff that's um, so third level and twelve intelligence. So now the second level spells are darkness, locate object, magic mouth, and web. Is that is that covered? I don't know that locate object is going to help us at all. Um, um, well, we don't have to take it. I mean, let's. let's dark, we yes, say, yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. It's in our book, but we don't take it. Well, this. I mean, my my point is, there's no special rules here for how it would work, so I'm guessing right. that means it's not covered. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So I could tell you that the only second level spells, in fact, even listed here. I presume some second level spells are just straightforward, and you don't need a special entry for them, right? Like, surely. Uh, huh, huh. The ones that are covered here are Continual Light, Invisibility, Levitate, and Web. And that's it? That's it. Oh, really? Continual Light... Uh, oh, wait, it says... Oh, and it even said... Wasn't there a thing there that said only the spells from pages 31 and 32 are available? Didn't I read that? I thought it was items. I thought I remembered mag only the magic items. Um... Uh, Using magic in combat. Uh, I'm happy to say that those are the only ones we can use. I mean, that's fine. Um, <laughs> give me a second here, because I thought I remembered reading something about this. Uh, Interesting. Uh, because of Strange Magic and Lion Castle, some spells do not work the same as they normally would. Elven Magic uses spells higher than second level that do not work. For details and spells whose effects are altered, read R16. Yeah, I guess you're right. 
Okay, well, those are the only ones I have notes on, but I bet there's plenty of second level spells that are just obvious how they work, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, knock. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, true. Um, anyway. So let's so let let's look at our spell book that I just that I just generated yeah, and think yeah. about what we want to take. Yeah. So what I just let's assume assuming that these are all available. So what I just rolled this time was I got darkness, locate object, magic mouth, and web. Okay. We get to pick one of those. I would go with web. I agree. Okay. The fancy web spell. Yeah. yeah we we know the ceilings are all ten feet, right? We do. That's important. So we can yeah. use it anywhere. Yeah, and all we can the all... top, bottom, anywhere we want. Yep. Okay. And then first level in our spell book, and we get to pick three of these. Yep. Um, can't duplicate them under OED yep. rule. Cannot yep. duplicate them. Yep. Um, so choose carefully. So I got charm person. I got detect magic. I got protection from evil. I got read languages, read magic, and shield. I mean, gotta take charm person, right? Yep. Always. <laughs> Do not have sleep in our spell book. What's our what's our AC? We have we have chain and shield, uh, right? And no dex modifier. Correct. So that puts us at four. Agreed. So the shield is eh, one whole point of AC for the shield yep. spell. Yep. Um, so I guess I'm not really feeling the shield spell. Like I'd rather have. Did you say protection from evil is in there? Under OED rules, you can't you can't carry a shield and cast a spell at the same time. Why not? Because it gets in the way. Well, you use your other hand. Yeah, but it's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You bang your hand against it. You got to do this kind of stuff, and the shield's in the way. It's a big shield. Crazy. Crazy. All right. All right. Um, I mean, you can put it down. I mean, you can, you can take a round and put it down, depending on how you you know how we're gonna do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you're saying shield, not the shield spell. It's not my favorite of the choices. What else do we have? They're all worse. Protection from evil. See, protection then, from evil, though, that's that's bonus AC, right? Correct. So I like protection from evil sounds better to, than, to me than shield. Okay. Great. Great. Yep. Yep. So I do make it, so in, uh, in, in our rules, we make it plus two. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And then I have divination stuff, so I got detect magic, read languages, and read magic. Those might come in handy. So the interesting thing is, um, I'm definitely seeing a lot of a lot of the pregens. In fact, all of the pregens are packing read magic. Okay. Okay. Take that. Yeah, I would take read magic. I, Great. My my uh, spidey sense says that that's actually going to be useful. Brilliant. <laughs> Great. Good. So we are carrying web at second level and then charm, protection, and read magic at first level. Great. Great. All right. Ready to head out? Uh, got to calculate encumbrance, Paul. <laughs> got to calculate encumbrance. <laughs> we all know it's so difficult because it's one stone for the shield. Oh and god, your fucking stone system. Okay. Two yep. stone for the chain. So complicated to be adding numbers like one and two <laughs> and things like that, right? That was the sword. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so that's this. Let's put a dot there. And then one for the shield. The rope ought to be a third. Um, there's a magic journal. I'll just say that's nothing. Nothing. Wolf's pain is nothing. That's nothing. Okay, another 21 days of rations. That I didn't expect. So you haven't had a player yet try to abuse the something between not. nothing? That's I have not. I, I know the player. I, I know you've had that, but I have, I have not had anybody try to abuse that at all. Um, maps of... Okay, I'm going to say nothing. Okay, great. So most of this stuff is negligible. Uh, three stone for all those rations. It was an enormous sack full of rations. That would last almost a month. Uh, plus two for the chain, plus one for the shield, and then a third each for the sword and the rope, and uh, that adds up to uh, six and two thirds. Okay. And two thirds stone, mostly that, because of those rations. What's that mean for so, our movement? Well, our strength is friggin' terrible, so we're actually at um, we're actually at max. Um, so. Almost carrying seven stone, our, our strength is only eight, which would be the cap, so we are at six inches. Okay. 
not 12, not 9, but 6. So okay. we're actually very slow under this huge sack of food. <laughs> how, how much of that food do we got to eat before we speed up? Uh, okay, so two-thirds of eight rounded uh, about, got to get down to about six, so about a week. If we dropped a week of food, we'd be at, uh, we'd be at the next move level up. Okay. Should we do that? Should we dump it? Is that... I, w I wouldn't advise it. Okay, great. Great. Mostly, mostly a sack of food plus us. <laughs> great. I'm willing to metagame the uh, types of things that the pregens are packing. Right. Because okay. I feel like those are important hints, and we will be banging our heads against the, uh, against the wall if we discover we didn't pack enough food. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, just doing so. So I could, I could go. I'm just doing some like the cat. I'm going to do the attack bonus here if you want okay. to get started. If that's fine. okay, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a there's a mountain of text here at the beginning. So I'm going to just start reading. Great. <clears throat> Roars of laughter and the sound of hearty voices in song rise from the tables in this warm, smoky tavern. You make your way through the crowd, listening as people talk of the great wizard Sargon and his haunted castle. Several of the tavern's patrons are apprentices of local magic users, and that is your occupation as well. You have joined the others tonight in the village of Sarsdell to trade stories and talk of your favorite topic, Lion Castle. Sargon was the greatest magic user of all time, he was, says an old woman who has stopped at your table. No magic worked on him, no sir, none but his own. Why, I see warlocks, wizards, and sorcerers pass through here every day, and not one of them will go near Lion Castle of his. <clears throat> Sorry, that Lion Castle of his, I missed a word. <laughs> They're afraid they'll lose all their powers. Crazy old woman. Not us, ma'am, says your f one of your friends. We've nothing to lose and everything to gain by exploring Sargon's castle. What is this Lion Castle? A newcomer asks. What a rube. <laughs> <laughs> the tavern keeper, who has told this story many times before, eagerly steps forth to inform the newcomer. Sargon was a strong wizard indeed, son, and his castle is a sight to behold. He built it on the grassland plains in the land they now call the Ethengar Khanate. I don't know why they call it that. It's difficult to say. Well, because it's ruled by a Khan, and their ethnicity uh, is the Ethengarians. There you go. Yep. Lion Castle is a beauty, son. She rises above the landscape, built so she looks like a great cat about to pounce. The newcomer is entranced. You smile because you know how this story goes. The tavern keeper <laughs> continues. Sargon's ghost resides there now, along with more than a few creatures, I suspect. The old wizard's ghost haunts the hallways, waiting for a worthy heir. Well, plenty have tried to enter the great stone cat after having heard of all its great magical rewards. Not many return, though, and would you believe those who make it back have turned into wild creatures? Whole armies have been defeated trying to enter Lion Castle, but they never knew the secret. What secret? What secret? The newcomer pleads. Only one person at a time may pass through the magical defenses of Lion Castle, son. And magic users and elves are about the only ones who even stand a chance. Okay. The tavern keeper's tale has stirred you and the others once again, and you decide to draw lots to see who will be the first to enter Sargon's Lion Castle. Great. The tavern keeper gladly watches over your table, waiting to see who will go forth and face Sargon's ghost. The lots are drawn. You are chosen! <laughs> what a surprise <laughs> the tavern keeper claps his hands and skips back to a cabinet in the back of the room you're a lucky one my friend he says as he pulls pieces of parchment from the cabinet take these maps and this magic journal with you if you do not survive your quest this journal magically reappears here in the tavern <laughs> for our personal amusement apparently <laughs> <laughs> oh, so your okay. friends and I know what sort of fate you befell. <laughs> I, I hereby <laughs> I hereby name the journal the the the, the Librum Ex Machina. Hmm. I mean, it really sounds like this is that the tavern keeper and my so-called friends have pulled a fast one on me. 
this is this is their entertainment. <laughs> Who yeah. will we send to Lion yeah. Castle with yeah. the with the journal? And then you know, then we all watch the journal and read it out to Super. each other. Laugh. Super. Mm. The tavern keeper hands you the journal and some incomplete maps of the castle. Others before you were able to map this much before, uh retiring. <laughs> finish these finish these maps and find that ghost, and you will be a hero indeed. Great. Now listen closely, says one of your friends. Follow the Streel River east for six days, and then hike north for two. Mm -hmm. See, aren't you glad we brought 21 days worth of food? After eight days, you should be able to see that great stone lion rising from the plain. Be careful that as you approach it, another friend cautions, wild beasts may attack you. Okay. The tavern keeper breaks in. You'll come to the outer curtain wall, and you'll see towers and gatehouses. Once you get beyond the curtain, you have to cross the outer ward. From there, friend, you can explore the castle's towers, gatehouses, and inner levels. Somewhere in that castle roams the ghost of Sargon, waiting for you to inherit all his possessions. Great. In the morning, you pack for your journey, study your spellbook, and prepare your weapon. You pack three weeks worth of iron rations for the long quest. Your friends accompany you to the edge of Sarsdell, shake your hand, and wish you luck. I almost forgot to tell you, one of your friends says. Legends say that entering the castle at night is very unwise. Rest before you enter and approach in the light of dawn. You thank your friend and turn to leave. You cross the river by ferry and turn east to walk along the river. The great grassland of the Ethengar Canate stretches out ahead of you. Six days pass. You okay. have seen few animals since you left Sarsdell, and you have talked to no one. You turn north away from the riverbank and begin crossing the flat grasslands. As the sun begins to set on the eighth day, a slight gray mound appears on the north horizon. The head of a huge stone beast pokes above the waving grass. Lion Castle stands ahead, only one day away. Dawn comes quickly, and you set out toward the castle. The time seems to drag. Finally, in the late afternoon, you come upon a, sight, a slight rise in the land. All of Lion Castle stands majestically before you. A ten-foot-high outer curtain wall stretches for 255 feet at the base of the castle. A full bite's worth of feet. <laughs> Twenty-foot-high towers rise from the wall, which is rimmed by a dry moat. Lion Castle itself rests on a ten-foot-high mound within the outer curtain wall. The lion's head rises 66 feet from the mound. Its great roaring mouth faces west. Subtract nine days' worth of rations from your character sheet. <clears throat> Here are our options. If you circle to, we can circle to the east, circle to the west, or decide to rest here. And here we have our map. Where apparently right. we're, I guess we're approaching from the butt side of the castle. Yes, I agree. Uh, good news, everybody. Our move rate went up. Went up. Sweet. Yep. <laughs> and we didn't starve. Correct. So far, so good. You know, actually, <laughs> two logistical things. One, yeah. we don't have any ranged weapons. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, right. So oh. we, we were, anyway, not that our dexterity turned out to be good anyway, but we, all we have is that sword in our spells. We oh, have a sword, crap. a minus one strength modifier, and four spells. Huh. And that's okay. it. Looking over the other characters to see if any of them have ranged weapons, some of them are carrying a dagger. Well, right. they're the magic users, right? Yeah, the right. magic right. users all have a dagger. Right, okay. Can they throw okay. it? Maybe? Yes. Will the option to throw it ever arise in the system of the text? You got to make your own options. <laughs> you got to make. You got to make your options. Um, and, you know, and the other thing is, um, so I, you know, I actually did upload a photo to Roll Twenty, okay. and I see it on my end, but I don't see it on on the uh, the broadcast. Oh, oh of that, you? You mean the, yeah. the yeah, yeah? That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I can try to refresh. I wonder what that'll do. Break everything, maybe? Let's find out. There we go. Good There's great. you. Great. Hopefully, as usual, the map my shows. tiny bit of OCD it bothered yeah. me of that blank spot. Great. Great. Oh, there we go. Nice. We're zoomed in crazy. Okay. Oh. Nice. Alright, so what do you think? Do you want to circle around the east? Circle... Wait, circle to the east or west? Wait, which side do we come from? I thought we were coming from the east, but uh, I actually wasn't following super closely, so I might have... 
I assumed we were lined up for that path, I assumed. All of Lion Castle stands majestically before you, a ten foot higher. Uh, ten foot down. Uh, less than ten foot. The lion's head rises sixty feet. Gosh, it really doesn't tell us. Well, it said that we were supposed to travel. Um, six. Follow the river east for six days, and then hike north for two. So I think we might actually be approaching from the south. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's that's yeah. Great. So are we? Do we have coded options for what to do now? Yeah. Those are our three options: is circle east, circle west, or rest here. Are we at the start of the day or the end of the day? Um, I think it's afternoon. Um, in the late afternoon. Okay. It's late so afternoon. I would, and remember, I would the advice was to rest yeah. before we enter. Let's rest. You want to rest here? Yeah. All right. Follow the steps in entry R15, which is healing and resting. Uh, subtract one day's worth of rations from your character sheet. Yep. Got it. Roll 1d6. Me? Don't, don't roll you. a 1. You, you go Me? ahead and do it. Me? And don't roll a 1, you're saying. Don't roll a 1. My rolls haven't been great so far. Good. Cool. All right, no wandering monsters. Great. If you do not encounter a wandering monster uh, while you're resting, add one hit point, which we are not wounded, so whatever. You may study your spell book and regain any spells, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, there you go. That's resting. Um, where were we? Uh, we decided to rest. Okay. Uh, where were we? No, sorry, we were on six. Okay. At dawn the next day, you wake to continue your quest. Do you want to enter over the west wall, enter over the north wall, enter through the outer gatehouse, or enter through the postern gatehouse? I think oh, I see. I, will, I, I see. <clears throat> Can I pan? There, there we go. Okay, so that north. Okay, so the so okay, I see. So the postern gatehouse actually goes into the interior tail of the castle, whereas the eastern gate goes through the through the outer courtyard. Is that what I'm seeing? Yes. Yeah. Right. So there's a there's the outer gatehouse here, and then there's a path mm -hmm. labeled path. <laughs> uh, and then this postern gatehouse here that presumably goes into this tower, and then maybe that enters into the tail. Right. So weren't we? We were being warned about like wild creatures in the outer ward. Is that do I recall that? I, I, hmm. I don't remember what our friends told us. They said a lot of things. <laughs> we, we drank a lot of. <laughs> we had a lot of ales. <laughs> <laughs> Something about a magic journal. Um. I feel like I would rather get inside early. So I would. I'm. I would. I'm attracted to the postern gatehouse that just takes us right inside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm down with that. Circle around to the north, go into the postern yeah. gate. Yeah. Well, now we're jumping ahead to C35. Sweet. You're standing before the postern gatehouse. Two sets of thick... Oh, there's a little note here. A postern gate is a small gate usually found at the rear or side of a castle. Mm -hmm. Usually for escape or like sallies to attack an attacker from behind. Two sets of thick wooden doors stand open inside the gatehouse. Beyond the doors, a long tunnel leads into darkness. If you have the proper spells or magic items, you may go through the gatehouse by becoming invisible, turning gaseous, or walking visibly. If you want to find another way into the castle, we can jump back to C8. Which is not where we were, by the way. <laughs> okay. No, but so, it is actually that is where we were. Okay. So I was worried that this is an obvious like point to be defended, right? If I if I own this castle, I would obviously defend this point. Yeah, and yet the here here the doors are wide open. Right, right. But it is it is asking us if we want to go invisibly or by gaseous form, so that sounds like 
ways of dodging the peril that is in front of us. But we don't have invisibility or right. a potion of gaseous form. So it's either go in or turn around and pick a different entry. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, uh, if we're allowed to inspect the entryway, then I would go around and I'd inspect the eastern entryway before making a decision, actually. All right, so you want to, we, 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 we want to find another way. Yeah. We're going to go back. Okay. You prepare to continue your quest. You may try to enter the castle if you want to enter over the east wall, north wall, gatehouse, or postern gatehouse, or flee back to Sarsdell. Do you want to flee back I, to Sarsdell? See, I always offer this to my players as well, but I, you know, I don't. No, okay. So, let's inspect the main gate. Excellent. Uh, the outer gatehouse. Yeah. Okay. You are standing before the outer gatehouse. A raised portcullis rests over the gatehouse opening. Beyond the portcullis, two sets of thick wooden doors stand open. A path wise, winds inward from the gatehouse and leads through patches of undergrowth toward the back of Lion Castle. You're going to love this one, Dan. If you have the proper spells or magic items, you may go through the gatehouse by becoming invisible, turning gaseous, or walking visibly. Now I think now I think that uh, Merle is fucking with you, and he's just going to give you this option well, every he. time. Every time. Do you want to be invisible, gaseous, or walk visibly? And then immediately we're like, oh crap, walking visibly is a trap. <laughs> Now we have a magical rope of climbing, right? So normally yep. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would, would the climbing over the wall wouldn't be my top option, but we do have a magical <laughs> rope of climbing. Uh, uh, let's just go in. Let's just go okay. walk down uh, the so path. I, I'm suggesting we, we go tunnel. to the, let's go, let's go to the postern gatehouse and walk invisibly. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So jump back to C8, blah, blah, yep. blah. Go to the Postern Gatehouse. That jumps us to C35. Yep. Here we go. All right. We're standing before the Postern Gatehouse. Two sets of thick wooden doors stand open. Beyond the doors is a long tunnel leading into darkness. Ready See, we got extra invisibly? information. We got extra information. We know that the invisibility or gaseous is not that critical. Might be helpful. Maybe they're all guarded. Could be. Okay. Walking in. You ready to go? Yeah. All right. Fortune favors the bold. Yeah. Murder holes pierce the ceiling between the two sets of wooden doors in this gatehouse. If you sneak, we can sneak under the holes, run, or retreat. And retreat just brings us right back to where we were. Sneak or I run? What do, you, what do you think? I don't know. Both, uh, both reasonably good. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it has specific, I mean, so, you know, elves are good at sneaking in woods, hiding in yeah. woods. It's a standard. Yeah. If uh, only we could turn it invisible or gaseous. <laughs> yes, yes, I get it. <laughs> uh, uh, I, would, I would try, I guess sneak? my, yeah, I would try sneaking. I yeah, guess. might as well maintain the element of surprise as long as we right. can. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to sneak. We're going to sneak. Sharp rocks ring down through the murder holes really? and you pass under them. Oh, no. <laughs> Make a saving throw versus wands. All right. Saving yes. throw versus wands. Um, um, great, great, great. So that's uh, so in, in OED, that's uh, we, we roll a d20. Uh, we add our level. And for wands, plus three. It's almost one of the better saving throws, actually. Okay. But we do need so to roll a plus six. We need, 20. we need plus a 14 six. or higher on a d20. Yeah. Yeah, it's going right. to come up 14 or higher. All right, I'm going to pull that. Yeah, go okay. for it. 14 or higher. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. No! It's a four. You're terrible. <laughs> oh, Shit. crap. Shit. Uh, I saw the four, and right? it's next to a 14, actually, so I was like, oh, crap. All right. Yeah, I'm going to roll our damage here. We're going to take a D4 of damage. Oh, that's all right. It's fine. Four points of damage. Shit. All right, we're down to 10, so we've gone down from 14 to 10. Okay, our okay. options now are to flee forward, stand still, or retreat. Flee forward, go flee forward. Flee forward, yep, run forward. Run, now, now we're on the run option. The second set of wooden doors slam shut behind you. You cannot open the doors. You cannot levitate, turn gaseous, become invisible, or use a rope of climbing here. Okay. You are in a dark tunnel. 
read yep. entry L5. You are in the Lion's Tail Tunnel. This dark five foot wide stone tunnel rises 10 feet into the darkness. The tunnel runs for 55 feet, then opens into a semicircular chamber. I wonder if, do we have a map for this thing? We might have a map for this. I think I saw an internal top level map somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think it's actually, I think it's the one that I just was mucking with. So yeah, it's gotta be this one, right? Yeah. Let's, uh, get that right. Okay. You're consulting our, our book of maps. Okay, great. Great. Yep. Great. We've entered through the tail tunnel. Yep. Um, the tunnel runs for 55 feet, then opens into a semicircular chamber. The chamber is 15 feet in diameter. A raised portcullis rests above the west wall of the chamber. A dark hallway leads west beyond the portcullis. You encounter a wandering monster in the tunnel. If you have no light source, follow the guidelines in entry R13. We don't have a light source. Um, what are the guidelines now? Elves have infravision and can fight monsters in the dark. If a magic user has no light source and is fighting a monster in the dark, the magic user suffers a minus four penalty on all hit rolls. The monster gains plus four on all hit rolls. These hit roll modifiers apply until the area is lighted or combat has ended. The magic user may cast a light or continual light spell in this situation if he has learned the spell that morning. He cannot read his spell book in the dark. Good thing we're an elf. Yeah. Oh, also, we have a visual aid. Um, there we go. Oh, geez. Oh, illustration. Scary. Uh, I'm assuming that's the illustration of this area. Actually, I have no idea. It's certainly, it's on the opposite page of what I'm reading. So, okay. um, for details on defensive maneuvers, retreating, throwing food or treasure at a monster, read entry R8. A sleep spell does not work if you encounter one of the following monsters. Giant, Draco, Lizard, Lion, Tiger, or Were-Tiger. All right, we're encountering a wandering monster. Determine what type of monster is in the tunnel. Roll, follow the steps on entry R14. Refer to table one, monster die rolls and modifiers. Determine what die roll and modifier should be used on table two. Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. Uh, uh. Tables. Table-tastic, Paul. <laughs> it is table <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Entries occasionally ask you to check, but I don't think it did ask us to check. It just says we encounter one. Right. Suck it. So, uh, follow steps in R14. Okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> Refer to table one, monster die rolls and modifiers to determine what die to roll. Table one... First table on this list, table four. Where the fuck is table one? <laughs> not not there. Where's table one? We're gonna find it. Hang on. Table one. It must be maybe towards the back of the book, I'm gonna guess. There's table three. That seems promising. Oh, wait, wait, here we go. Table one. Uh, we are in castle level one, yep. so our die roll is d12 and our modifier is plus six. d12 plus six. Gonna roll that now? Uh, what die roll modifier should you use on table two wandering monsters? Yep. For example, if you're exploring castle level one, roll d I could have jumped to the red that first, and add six to your die roll. If you roll the four, your final result will be ten. Yes, so roll... Oh, wait, let me, uh, let me get rid of the picture here. Let's... So we can see your die roll. Great. Okay. Well, plus six coming up now. Yep. yep. I can't see that. That looks 16. like a 10 to me. 16. 16. A rock baboon. Oh, man. A baboon. Uh, <laughs> b -b 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 baboon. Using, using the blah, 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 blah. If you encounter one of these, uh, boar, giant rat, or tiger, nope. After you resolved your wandering monster encounter, record any... Tr okay, well, I guess we go into combat, my friend. Okay. I guess we're fighting a rock baboon. Now, uh, we, can do the, we can do the whole food thing, right? We can, can, if we throw food, can we get by it? We can get by it if that's successful? Um, I'm trying to remember where that was. That was in... Oh, a lot of sticking the thumb in and jumping around. 
R8 is where that is covered. Okay. Um, if you choose to throw food or treasure to a monster, subtract the item you threw from your character sheet. Intelligent monsters are stopped only if you throw treasure, a coin, gem, or magic item. You may encounter the following intelligent monsters in this adventure. Bugbear, Knoll, Goblin, Hobgoblin, Orc, Wereboar, and Werewrap. All mm -hmm. other monsters in this adventure stop only if you throw food. Mm -hmm. After you've thrown the food or treasure roll 1d6, on a 1, 2, or 3, the monster stops and marvels at its gift. Consider yep. the stopped creature as a defeated monster. You cannot take its treasure, however. On a roll of 4, 5, or 6, the monster ignores your gift and attacks. So I suggest, so we have a 50% chance of just being done with this if we throw food and we can get by it and it's wandering and it doesn't have any treasure. I don't think that part is true. Oh, really? Yes, because the wandering monster chart in this book lists the treasure for each monster. Oh, really? It definitely has treasure. Oh, really? Uh, so the interesting thing about the choose to throw food or treasure to a monster is it comes right after the part about retreating. If you choose to retreat, if your rate is greater, blah, before you leave, however, they get to attack. Also, you cannot defend yourself. If your movement rate, you, if your movement rate per round is less than or equal to the monster's rate, you must stay and fight the monster. You may decide to throw food or treasure to the monster at this point. Oh, okay, yep, okay. Well, yeah, so you I know, think that's, that's standard. standard. I, yeah. I, I think that's about escaping, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I think we got to fight this thing. All right. Okay. Which is, I mean, come on. You you got you want to fight a rock baboon, don't you? No, I don't. <laughs> I want to I want to I want to use wits and cunning and get by it without without violence at all, <laughs> without any risk to myself, really. Excellent. I don't care Excellent. about violence. <laughs> I'm willing to dish out the violence. I'm not willing to accept it in my own personal space. Oh, here's but, interesting. Uh, initiative. Roll 1d6 for yourself first, then for the monster you have encountered. If your die roll is higher, you may attack, or you may try to talk to the monster. If the die rolls are the same, roll both dice again. If you speak the monster's language, the monster does not attack and allows you to pass unharmed. If you try to talk to the monster in a language it doesn't know, you lose initiative and the monster attacks. You know, I almost asked about languages when we start out, because we didn't actually specify the languages for our character design. Do you want to just yank them from the pregen? Sure. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be basic. So it's, so as an elf, we're going to get a bunch. Oh, I fucking hate that. Um, let Let's go OED rules in which you know just just original D and D. You'd get one language per point of intelligence above ten. So we got to get okay. two extra. We got to get okay. common plus two more. You can pick. You can pick the two that sound interesting from those lists. Um, if I don't look at common, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven. Okay. If I nix the alignment language because we all agree alignment languages are dumb, then there right. are six. So let's roll two d six. Great. That's what I suggest. I will. I will roll those right now. Uh, where are the dice? There they are. I got a five and a six, so we speak ogre and orc. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Great. Not rock baboon. Yeah, they're unintelligent, so they don't, they don't <laughs> talk in the first place. <laughs> so, rolling d6 for initiative. You want to roll for us and I'll roll for the baboon, or other way around? Sure, sure. So for us, us is in red. Yep. Yeah, I wish it would let us leave the dice behind and clear them when we want to clear them. So you got a four. Yeah. And this is for the baboon. He gets two. Great. So we get to go first. Great. Uh, what do you think? We what, can't what, charm it, and I don't want to use the web. What? How many? What its our? What's its stats? I mean, you, I guess you can see that. What's its hit dice? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are special rules for the web spell. Yeah. Um, the special rules are simply that it's broken as soon as you enter another room. Okay. It's not oh, very exciting. Okay. End of story. Um, AC6, two mm -hmm. hit dice, nine hit points. Two attacks per round. Oh, no. Like D6 each, or? No, uh, D6 and a D3. Club and a bite. Oh! <laughs> and a D3? God, I... Anyway. Yep. Right. That's not great for us, honestly. Um, we got decent AC though. We got a shield and a sword okay. and right. sword plus one, right? What's our what's our total bonus to hit? Three. 
three. So, uh, you know, so we, we, we got the plus one from the sword, but minus one from the strength, so they can't tell oh, our strength just level. sucks. Ugh. Right, yeah, so, it's, it's, so, so it winds up just being our level, which is three. Uh, okay, all right. So three. Yep. Um, I think you got to go at him with the sword. Great. <laughs> Not great. Um, here I go. Yep. I, I really wish I had another option here. Um, can't use the wolf's bane. All right, here we go. Um, D20. So we're gonna so under OE under target twenty rules, we're gonna roll this twenty. Basically, just add my level, add their AC, and I'm hoping for twenty or more. So D20 yep. plus my three plus their six. So about 50, 50 chance. Come on, let me see double. Great. So twelve. Oh no. What? No, that's twenty one. Right. Okay. So nine. Yep. So twelve plus R three plus their six is twenty one, and that's a yep. hit. That is a hit. Now Do I'm going to roll damage, damage which yep. is a straight D8. Again, the magic sword plus one and our horrible strength cancel out, so it's just a straight D8. And we have done, what is that? Max Ten, damage. Eight, eight damage. It has nine hit points. Of course it does. It's got one hit point left. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. Morale? What about morale? Morale, DM? There, yeah, okay, okay. Let's, 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 right. let me, there is totally morale in here. Um, during this part of step B on the combat checklist, I didn't know there was a combat checklist. <laughs> uh, where's the combat checklist? Um, uh, fighting monsters, when you enter in, you go to the combat checklist on the booklet cover. Uh... A, initiative. Yep, we did that. Decide that wins initiative, acts first. Morale check, monsters only. Movement, magic, spells, hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Decide that loss initiative now completes all the actions in B. Yeah, so morale check is the first part of that. Uh, roll 2d6, only if you have hit the monster once, which we have totally done. Roll yes. 2d6, Dan. If the dice roll is greater than the monster's morale, the monster is demoralized and tries to retreat. What is the monster's morale? Its morale is eight. Okay, so I'm hoping for more than eight here. Seems no, seven. Oh, it's sticking around. Seven. Sticking around for the fight. Um, okay, so I think it's going to attack us. In uh, OED rules, it would have run away. If the monster's movement rate per round is great. <laughs> why, why is that? Uh, because, so in, in OED, um, I use the reaction table, roll 2D, 2d6, add their hit dice, and then minus one if they've been damaged this much. And, and in order to stay in the fight, they need a nine or more. So that would have come out to be eight. They would have missed it by one, and they, uh, they would you know, actually run away. I think we should follow the book on this one. That's fine. Totally. So, uh, okay, so it swings its club at us. What's our AC? Our AC is four. Four, and it's two hit dice, so it's getting plus six to this. Uh, yes. I rolled a natural one. Nailed it. Roll on the OED um, fumble table. I don't have that. Do roll roll another might. D20. Roll another D20, and if it's one through five, something horrible happens to it. Yeah, okay. For sure. <laughs> All right, wait, no, go away. That's rolling. Uh, seven. It's okay, so right. it avoids any horrible fumble. Avoid avoids horrible fumble is just, just a terrible, embarrassing miss. Is that in the judge's rules here? Um, oh, you know, I think it's on my screen these days. I don't think I've actually put it in the judge's rules yet. I don't know. I should be using these Dan's custom rules that I never use. Okay. <laughs> here, so, so now you've wasted its well, seven on its, yes. on its avoiding that. So now here comes its bite. Here's where it bites us in the oh, ass. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Literally. Literally. No, no, no. Oh, oh geez. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> See, this is why you need this kind of dice roller for these I games, totally right? Agree. That was I totally <laughs> Yikes! 20, 20. Oh, no, no, it's an 8. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's so, so 8 good. plus 16 is 14, obviously, which does not reach the target of 20 that you need to hit. Excellent. We hold up our shield just in time as it reaches in to bite, and it gnaws on the edge of the shield. Uh, Get him, Dan. Can I, can I attack now? You can attack. I guess attack I should check the combat checklist to make sure there's nothing goofy. Um, if neither side is defeated, continue by doing steps A through D. Oh, really? You want to roll initiative to, uh, every time? Screw that. Oh, right. No, they used to do that. Right. I Screw forget. That. You, you and I don't do that in our games, but yeah, they used to do that every round, right? 
to that, I say. Go ahead, okay. attack. Great. Nailed it. Okay, so again, I want this to be like at least 11, I think. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, no. And now it doesn't have to roll morale again, right? Because it passed it. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Crap. All right, here it comes, swinging its club again. Is, what is that? Is that cocked? It's cocked. <laughs> <laughs> they're, both, they're both lit up. There's two bases that are literally lit up. What is going on? I, how can is you there, get a cocked result on now, digital okay, dice? Now, the text says five, Paul. The text, the, the, the chat box says that's a five. <laughs> that is brilliant. Uh, I love that it can get cocked. Uh, yeah, there's. Yep, yeah, you're right. Tex says that it's a five. Okay, so I guess that counts as a five. Okay, fine. It missed with the club. Right, but here it comes good. to bite us in the ass. Right. Miss it. No, a three. It. Man. Good. Good. Dice are cold tonight. Good. Good, good. Uh, back to me? Yeah. Okay, so here's here's our sword again. For 11. Or, come on. Come on. You can do this. No, I can't do this. <laughs> Shit. Oh, man. Okay, here comes the club. Oh, man, I got a 50-50 chance of wiping it out. Man, Good. look at this. Good. I've... Good. Lift the shield. Bang off the shield. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. We can do this. Here comes the bite. Here comes the Don't bite. Don't get under the shield. Oh. Those are cold dice, and I like it. <laughs> really? really? Come on. He's got one freaking hit right. point, Dan. Hit him. Hit him. This will do it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it by two. Crap. <laughs> oh, we, I hate these two attacks. Are we using old school D20s here that just have zero to nine twice? No, you can see the 11 and 19. We hit them the first time. Well, they should put that in the they should put that in the system though. They should. They should. Come on. Um, okay, yes. it's got what a plus six. Correct. Yeah. That's 17. Not yeah, enough. 17. That's not enough. Here comes the bite. Here comes the bite. Oh, oh no! Oh shit! It hit us and finally got. Finally Shit. pushed the shield aside and leaned in and gave a guy's uh, chomp. Crap. Uh, double we... damage? Are we doing that? Sure. Yep. Yeah, That's I'm going to roll a d6 and remember that this is actually a d3. Okay. So two points, but oh, uh, but we doubled it because <laughs> of the natural 20. There you go, so it's four. four oh, points man. Damage. Okay, so that takes us from 10 down to 6. Oof. Oof. Ugh. 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 All right. So here I, okay, I need to finish it off now. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's totally that's, it, right? That's, so that's eleven it. plus R three yeah. plus their six. That is twenty. Jeez. And I will, although it has one hit point, I'll roll a D eight. Yeah. Another yeah. max damage. <laughs> Wish I'd done that one round before. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. All right. Oh, okay. So here's our treasure. You ready for this? This is actually exciting. Okay. All right. One hundred and thirty-five gold pieces. Oh, what's that going to do me? And a wand of paralyzation with five charges. Oh, shit. Oh, snap. Yeah. Yeah. Take that, oh, Rock that's Baboon. That's critical. So, we got some treasure we can throw to an intelligent monster, and we have a wand of paralysis that we can go to town with. But I'm only yeah. at six hit points. Okay. Do you want to jot, so we're, we're, we're about at the time where I need to stop mm -hmm. playing tonight. So, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. um, you want to jot somewhere in your notes there that we are in L5. Mm -hmm. Is our current location. And uh, we can pick this up again sometime. Great. What'd you think? I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, kind of I fun. like it. This is, this is, this is working nice. Yeah. <laughs> What did you write there? Just tail, tail tunnel? Is that what that yeah. Is? Tail tunnel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, did you do that with your um, with your tablet? I did. Yeah. yeah. I did. So. I, and I, I like. I'm. 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 Um, you know. I'm kind of learning. Um, you know. I need. I need to practice. Right. I need to practice my my handwriting, and I'm always. Um, you know, how, how carefully do I make the letter versus how much time am I taking in the live stream to do that? So I'm always yeah. kind of gauging speed versus accuracy. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a, I think, I think there is a, a text. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I'm using the opportunity to practice my yeah. handwriting because okay. I got to do that for all the math stuff. Because you can do that like, for your classes. Yeah. You know, summation okay. from N equals one to five of two to the N, that kind of thing. Yeah. 
right? I can't, there's no text, there's no text uh, tool in these whiteboards that, to do that. Cool. Two to the one plus two squared plus two cubed plus two to the fourth plus two to the fourth. <laughs> you just all keep flying. Eight, two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32, which comes out to about 63, I think. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So for the superscripts and the summations and the symbols, I gotta I gotta practice my handwriting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think that was fun. I yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed like that. It. Um, uh, there are four total of these adventures, uh, and they become increasingly more complex. I think as they go. Um, but I think I think there's a lot to this still there's something like five yeah. fucking levels in this thing so oh really okay yeah yeah there's a lot <laughs> there's actually okay. quite a lot what are the uh, codes for the other modules so there's b solo there's yeah. m solo one and m solo yeah. two and yeah. x solo okay yeah and uh, honestly x solo is the one that's so i've played this one once and i played okay. m solo one a shit ton that's the one i had as a kid and i played that gotcha. one a lot uh, M Solo Two is the one that I played with Jen very briefly, and I told you we got eaten by a bear, and then right, she right. decided that was conclusive enough. Right. <laughs> and, uh, so I haven't played that one very much. And X Solo, I'm actually really interested in because it tries to do more wilderness shit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'm very fascinated by that. Got it. Got it. Um, so it's this one, Lion Castle, or Ghost of Lion Castle, and there's. Blizzard Pass, Maze the Riddling Rib Minotaur, and then Lathan's Gold, right? Yeah, yeah. Like and I think thing. we could play Lathan's Gold. I think Lathan's Gold also requires that you be an elf. Uh, yeah. I know that that um, M Solo One, the, the, who's Blizzard Pass. Uh, I think in that one you're a thief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I it's don't... interesting because on the one hand, like an elf, and and there's a, there's other, um, you know, not programmed adventures, but there's solo. It, you know, one DM, one player adventures yeah. you, you, that, that have the O designation, mm -hmm. O1, Gem and Staff, in which you're a thief, and O2, I never remember what the name of that is. Anyway, in O2, you're an elf. Huh. So it, it does kind of make sense, like like on the one hand, Blade of Vengeance, that's O2. Um, so on the one hand, like an elf gives you a nice well-rounded adventure, right, for kind of standard yep. dungeon-y stuff. Yep. And on the other hand... You know, if you're going to play solo, it's a nice opportunity to do like the standard what you think a thief is going to do in the first place. Yeah, opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So I think those are common good design choices. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, cool. All right, so um, yeah, we can pick this up another time. Cool. Jump like back it. into it. Yeah, yeah. Super I like fun. So Super fun. Great. I, awesome. I kind of like I kind of like roll twenty. I see why people are using this. I gotta say the dice roller is great, and getting the dice right on top of the map is nice. Yeah. Um, I'd be curious how it plays out when you've got six people who are also juggling character sheets and stuff. And yes. I almost yeah. I almost kind of don't want. I guess I don't want the character sheet there. Like even I can yeah. imagine playing fifth edition on this, in which yeah. case I'm gonna have another window with my, you know, D and D Beyond. Yeah. Right. Or I'm gonna use paper. Right. So I just did. Yeah, I, just I think did maybe this. I don't want. I'll be curious to see, like, when there are miniatures on the board, right? And you're moving them around. How that right. works? That will never happen in this, right? The the, the text right. already told us we always assume that you're ten feet from your opponent. Yeah, I think your opponent is always guaranteed to be one creature. Yeah, I think yep. you're yep. never you're never fighting more than one thing in this. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. Well. Um, all right, well, we'll chat, and we'll figure out when to schedule the next one. Cool. Cool, very good. Maybe, you know, possibly Tuesdays. That might be not bad. Yeah. What am I looking at there? Figure it out. Yeah. Instructions. Okay, cool. cool. Great. Oh, uh, excellent. Well, have a good night, and uh, yep. thank you, uh, viewers, who uh, who joined us. Although, I don't maybe we lost some folks, or maybe you uh, stuck around and watched us play this ridiculous adventure. <laughs> um, I had fun, and we'll uh, we'll figure out if we're going to, like, archive these somewhere or something cool um awesome cool all right thanks good for night, Dan. Up. yep you too good night paul